the worst way would be walk into a store, wherever that is, pull one off the rack, swing it around a little bit, and decide that's the one you're gonna spend 300 bucks on. Not a good way to do it. So I'm here at the Ping Putting Lab with my best friend, Eric, who we've spent a good 20, 30 minutes together. I feel like that's fair to call you that. Mm -hmm. I want to look at some of the iPut uh, data that you have here, your leaderboard with all those hack tour players on it, and then talk maybe a little bit about some of the video that you capture here. We're in the putting lab. Uh, I oversee all of our golf science research. So that's answering the basic research questions about how different design variables influence performance, how different design elements influence what a player does, um, getting in even into the psychological bit of it. And we're having you take some putts with iPing, uh, which is using the inertial sensors in that iPod touch to measure your stroke. More importantly, I'm done with the test. There we go. Tell me what I need to know. So we have some results. Um, and so we're measuring a bunch of different things. Uh, the top two are looking at face angle. Yep. So that first one is the difference in the face angle from the end of your backswing to impact. So you're closing at about five and a half degrees. Um, and it looks like from where you set up at address, you tend to uh, deliver it with a little uh, more of a closed face. Yeah, I just hit little pulls into the hole. Little One. pulls, but they're going into the hole. So that more means that you're probably aiming a little to the right. Absolutely. You're a right aimer. Yep. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with that. We very rarely see any of our tour players at zero. But what do you think is like a reasonable amount for, for most people? You know, some of the best putters we've had on staff. Yeah. I mean, we've had people up to four degrees. Really? One that way much? or okay. another. Interesting. Um, and so I really struggle to kind of, now if, if the consistency is all over the place, yeah. that's when we start looking at, okay, well, maybe there's an alignment aid here that'll help you yeah. be a little more repeatable with that impact angle. Um, and so that that's more what we would gear toward rather than a absolute number one yeah. way or another. Yeah, and that all makes perfect sense. If you're good at anything, there's no reason to change. It's if you're struggling with something, then you got some some thought there. So tempo 1.9, we see average around 1.8, so you're kind mm -hmm. of right in the middle of the bell curve. Uh, in terms of tempo, uh, with lie angle, um, we would you know probably put you in something a little flat. Uh, and shaft lean, maybe a little bit of a, a hands forward at impact in this session. So we might look at loft, maybe adding a bit of loft. Um, but we have plenty of cameras here that we'd look at how that ball is rolling and really dial in that recommendation. Yep. Um, and you see on the left-hand side there that um, your, uh, your stroke type is slight. And so with that slight stroke type, um, we would end up um, really looking to um, you know, put you in something like an answer putter, uh, something with kind of middle of the road in terms of, of toe hang. Um, well, that's good because that's what I like to use. Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's an I-ping fitting. Um, you can kind of see for each of these, you know, the spread. So these top two, you had a handicap around, you know, five. Yep. Uh, your tempo and your lie angle were really repeatable. Um, so kind of in the scratch level. Mm -hmm. And that shaft lean, there was one putt in there you saw kind of really threw off that putting handicap, which is just a measure of repeatability. And yeah. so... You know, you were talking about the folks on the board with all these plus handicaps. Mm -hmm. um, that's just a measure of, you know, you see them around plus five. If we put, you know, this putter on that putting robot over there and had the putting robot take five putts, be around a point, you know, plus seven. Yeah. Not a bad group. We had some, we had some good putters group. up here. Um, I didn't make the leaderboard today, but we'll do this again tomorrow, maybe. You can come in tomorrow, can't you? Fine. <laughs> I'm here all the time, <laughs> Nick. So you've got some cameras here too. Uh, what what types of things are you having, whether it's either you doing a fitting or whoever's doing the fittings here? What sort of things are you looking at in 2D here that might uh, might matter to you? Yeah, so I, I mean, with this individual, we see just kind of looking at where the eyes are, you know, relative uh -huh. to the ball um, and, and the putter. Um, you know, it helps us dial in, you know, I mentioned lie angle. We have cameras kind of face on to the ball and down the line so yeah. we can look at lie angle and delivered loft. We actually have cameras overhead. So when we're doing testing in here, looking at distance control, we can actually generate dispersions. So have players go between, say, 
different weighted putters mm -hmm. um, and understand how head weight influences your ability, uh, your, your distance control. Yeah. Um, and we've done some research to kind of tie that into tempo and um, our fitting philosophies. Um, and so, yeah, for fitting, mainly we're using these uh, body cameras and then the cameras down uh, at the putter head so we can help make recommendations even for setup and length as well as things like loft and lie. Yeah, so if you're getting fit for a putter using some sort of tech like you did with your, your uh, iPing app, uh, filming your, your stroke to look for just subtle differences between uh, why you might have a tendency one way or the other or distance problems, uh, seem like a pretty good idea for a putter fitting. I'd ask you if you disagree, but I already know your answer. Uh, so when you're in here with someone for the first time and trying to do a fitting, do you like the 10 footer that's flat as just a good baseline for a putter fitting? Yeah. So when we're doing kind of that initial evaluation, 10 footers, just a nice one to look at tendencies. Yeah. And then once we feel like we have, you know, kind of more of a selection set of, you know, a model and, you know, even looking at grip and things, we'd probably take that cup away and go for some more mm -hmm. longer putts and see if we need to look at head weight or anything like that to improve distance control. Um, and so, and ideally we don't just hang out here in the lab, right? This is a yeah. 70 ton piece of flat granite, not the most real life experience. And so we always try to pair this with going outside onto the proving ground mm -hmm. and a real green and take them, you know, maybe if there's one or two that we're kind of going out there and having them put a couple holes, just put the ball down, make a read, execute a putt. Yeah. and do a little game-like fitting, right, uh, to really dial in that uh, um, the model and the length and the lie yeah. and loft and um, stress test the fit. Stress right? test, I like that for sure. Uh, you have such a great environment for something like that. The worst way would be walk into a store, wherever that is, pull one off the rack, swing it around a little bit, and decide that's the one you're going to spend 300 bucks on. Not a good way to do it. So whatever kind of putter fitting you can do is a, is a good piece of advice. 100%. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for showing us around. This is a pretty cool place you have here. Uh, one of my favorite well, favorite sure, spots on campus. And I'm sure everybody watching this, this is the type of place they want to be. So it's, it's cool that you get to hang out here. Thanks, best friend, Eric. Happy to host you. <laughs>